Hello and welcome everyone to another Brad Teachers video. This time we are looking at Unit 4. So just to begin, Unit 4 is all about tic-tac-toe and we basically want to create a tic-tac-toe game that can be played by two players on our Python interpreter. So we have four definitions that we were given. Um, I'm working off a particular prompt in the uh, given project, in the given content. So if this doesn't look exactly like your prompt, that's fine. I think this will still help you out with your tic-tac-toe project. So we have these four functions that we're giving. Each one of them is uh, used in our main function, which you can see down here, if name equals main, to call and basically to run our game. So we have the print game board, which pretty much does exactly what it sounds like. We have check winner, which is gonna go through every single turn and see if anyone has won. Then we're also going to check tied, which is gonna check and see if the game is over because all these spots are taken, or make move, which is going to see if, uh, or is going to actually do the making of a move. So it'll ask the player which uh, you know position they wanna play and it'll take it from there. So to start, let's go ahead and start outside of any of these functions and let's create our board for the game, which given with the uh, rules of the prompt or uh, the prompt for the project, we wanna create as a list of lists. So here I'm going to create three of my lists and inside each of them, I'm going to create just three elements. And of course, these just correspond to the uh, rows and columns that we have within our game, right? So if I copy this, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and replace right there and replace right there. Um, and the basic idea that we're going with for this is that each of these inside uh, arrays count as a row and each different part of the uh, outer array counts as a, um, is a different column, right? Or am I saying that right? So we want to do like this is the top portion, this is the middle portion, and then this is the lower portion. So I guess each one of these is a row um, and it's kind of corresponding to the different columns that we have, right? So with that being said, we actually want to um, start writing each one of these. So let's go ahead and start with writing our print game board. And what this is going to do is just going to take in the game board as it is, and it's going to print it out, right? So we're going to say, um, the way that I want to do this, I want to do a loop within a loop. So I want to say like for I in range, and then this is going to be like the size of the loop of the, um, I'm sorry, it's going to be the number of rows. And then for J in range is this is going to be every single element within each row, right? So I'm going to go ahead and start by defining two variables that I am going to use which is called tier size, and tier size is going to be equal to the length of the game board. So it's going to be the size of just any row in the game board. Since every row is gonna be the same, and since we're not really changing the tic-tac-toe board, I'm not worried about making it super um, you know, modular. I'm not worrying about it taking in any size of game board, although that is a possibility. It's not really the way that we're playing this game, right? And then the second one is gonna to be total tiers. And again, tiers refers to the um, to the number of rows in our game board. So here it's going to be len, and then just game board in general. So it'll be it's going to be counting one, two, and three. Inside of my first outer range, I want to use the total tiers. So we're going to go we're going to go through one, and then two, and then three, and then inside each tier, I want to count out the actual. Uh, size of the tier. So theoretically, we could print out like a four size tier. That's kind of why I made it like this. Um, but for tic-tac-toe, it's almost always going to be just three and three. To set this up, this corresponds very heavily to our lesson. Um, I don't want to say it's four, three. I think it might be four, four, where we are going through and printing out all these different types of, um, all these different, you know, size the lists with all these different rules. So definitely go back and check that lesson. Um, besides that, we are going to say print and I want a space right here. That is just going to give me a new line um, each time. And within the inner range loop, I want to say print and I'm going to use this character right here. If you're looking for it on your keyboard, it's usually right above your enter key and all you have to do is click shift and hit that key. I know it's kind of a random key, so you might not find it. And we're going to say end equals and that basically makes it so that our line does not end with each new print statement and I can separate them. Then I wanna actually print out what's on the game board. So I'm going to say I is my first portion 
and J is my second portion. Remember for multi-size arrays, this is how we access each different part. So I'm saying on the I number tier. So again, we're going to this tier right here to begin with. And then on the piece within that tier that I wanna see. So I would be selecting this piece right here. And on the second iteration in this loop, I would be selecting this. So I'm gonna go ahead and click space and end is equal to um, a space right there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep that as it is. Then at the end, I also want to print out another um, symbol right here. And that's gonna make my code much more readable because it's gonna give me four instead of just three. Um, it's gonna allow me to kind of see it a little bit better. Some people only use three for this, three of these lines, which was what'll print out. Um, I want more to be printed. So then finally at the end, I'm going to print out a solid line and that should be it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and print that space, click save. I'm gonna get rid of this pass statement right there. And um, one of the reasons I have these pass statements is just so the functions don't kind of throw any errors and the interpreter, um, the IDE that I'm working in, sees that the uh, function has something in it and it doesn't error out on me. Um, if I'm looking through it now, my game board's good, my definition is good. We're just gonna go ahead and start this main loop by calling my function because I wanna test it as I go. So I'm going to say print game board and then I'm going to give it the game board variable. You can see it's using a different version of game board and we should be pretty much set. So I'm going to right click and run lesson and you can see it's printing it out. So the way that this would work is that it's going to print out the uh, line to start and then you can see that's why I added the extra tall line right there because I want one space, two space, and three spaces. It's gonna make my code, I think, much more, or I should say my output, much more readable. As we continue through the project, I'm uh, going to start with my sort of main area in my game loop. Um, while we could work on each, each of these functions uh, line by line, I want to start setting up some of the game loops so that we actually have some context to each one of these different functions and where they fit in and what I want from them. So I'm going to start with the um, basic setup for our game, or at least what I would call basic, and I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste what I have for my notes. So as you can see here, we print uh, just asking the user if they're ready for a game of tic-tac-toe. We've seen this in a lot of projects. We take in the player's names and then I assign them a symbol, either X or O. And then I also have some variables for my game loop. So the three variables that I have set up are the game loop being continue to start with, the game count equaling to zero, uh, just if you want to kind of make the games repeatable later on, and then the winner as well. So the winner starts blank and then I'll fill it in later on. With that being said, I want to set up my main game loop. Uh, I'm gonna do this a little bit different than I have on some of my previous projects. Um, I'm just gonna say game loop is equal to continue. We know that the users are still playing. And then once that continue stops being continue or it changes, I'll break that and uh, we will continue on. So inside of my game loop, I wanna call um, the print and I want to say the current game board The current game board is, and then of course we can call our uh, amazing function that we just created, which is game board. So we print the game board and then we just obviously feed in the game board, which I feel like I'm gonna be saying a lot in this video. Um, and then next, we actually want to make a move. And what we wanna do for make a move, we've already been given the arguments. I'm gonna go ahead and assign it those arguments. Uh, game board being the first one, the player one name, since we're gonna do our first player's turn, and then the symbol is going to be player one symbol. And I just wanna comment that in, so I'm seeing it later on and I'm asking the player for their first move. And of course, for the second player move, we are also going to do the same thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that down. And instead of player one name, of course, I'm going to copy and paste in player two name and then player two symbol. Um, within these, we'll also be doing kind of checking for who's won. So later on, I'll be taking check winner and check tied, and I'll be checking that after every single turn. But we first need to actually set it up so that the players can make moves. So let's go ahead and do that now. And if we scroll up, we can find a make move function. And um, 
this is where I wouldn't say we start to get complicated, but we start to get a little bit more involved, right? Everything up to here has been somewhat simple, um, but now we actually have to deal with the logic of the game, which of course, in my opinion, is always the most difficult part. So here, what I want to start with is I want to start with a variable that I'm going to call valid move, and I want to set valid move to false. And how I'm going to use this is the users have to go, so they can't forfeit their turn. They have to go until they have a valid move. So I'm going to say while not valid move. If you've been watching my videos up to this point, you may have not seen this syntax before. What we're saying here is while not is checking that the Boolean variable I've assigned uh, is not true. That's basically what we're saying. It's kind of like an implicit while not, while, while this variable is not equal to true, um, it's just a cleaner syntax for it. And I'm gonna be using it for this video. So here I want to print out a string of the user's name and I'm going to say, uh, please enter which column and row you would like to um, put your marker in. And this is going to prompt the user um, for the user, um, I want to say player column is equal to um, int input. And then I'm going to say, um, please enter a column one, two, three. So this will prompt the user to put in a column and I'll give it some space. Uh, where they're gonna use this later to uh, actually assign their marker inside the game grid. So here, player column is equal to please enter column. And then the second one that I created, I want to assign to the player row. And of course, I wanna change that right there as well. So once they've chosen that, I want to um, just print out, or actually wanna show them. I'm sorry, I don't wanna show them. I wanna check within our game board to see if there is already a piece there. If there is, then um, they're not gonna be able to actually put something down. They have to continue, right? They can't overwrite someone else's marker. So here I'm saying if game board, um, and then I'm going to do our two array positions is not or is equal to blank. You can see I'm struggling. So if my game board is equal to blank, I actually want to assign it. Um, so I'm just gonna say game board blank blank is equal to the symbol that we've assigned into our function or that we pass through into our function. And then I also want to say valid move is equal to true. And then otherwise I'm gonna say else. Um, actually, we don't even need to, uh, to do an else, right? Because uh, functionally we should already have the false and false will stay like that until this part of the function is passed right here. We can say um, if valid move is, or if not, actually we want to say not valid move, then we will print and we will tell the user that um, that move is not valid. That space is taken. Please try again. Right, pretty simple, and that loop will just continue. Now, of course, we actually want to assign our variables. So here, the player column is going to be my second variable. So I'm going to say player column, and I want to assign it minus one. And here I'm going to call player row minus one as well. So what we're doing here is we're saying the row, which is the first thing that they choose, right? Because we can see right here, this is my first row. And then the second thing we choose is column within that row. Um, and the reason we're doing minus one, of course, is because it does have an index. It is a list and lists start at zero, whereas we're asking the user in a language that they would understand from one to three. So here I am going to assign the same thing. And I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and replace what they have. So now I'm gonna go ahead and save it. We can see game board has been changed. And if I scroll down here, this code should work as it is. And let's go ahead and let's go ahead and try it out, right? So if we run the project, I'm going to say Brad and the second user's name, I'm going to assign to Mike. So it says the current board is this, please enter which row and column you'd like to put your marketer in. I'm going to try one and one, and it's gonna say uh, Mike, cause it's not giving me the game board yet. 
and it's going to ask us what he wants to do. I'm going to say three and three. And you can see right here, it is assigned X, which is player one symbol to one, one, and is assigned zero or O, which is the second player symbol to three, three. And we'll have some changes to make in the next part to these, uh, to this assignment, to this unit project. But right now we have a semi workable game of tic-tac-toe.